Life Audio. Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we will have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And join our Facebook group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast, and it's a wonderful community of people reading the Bible together and growing in unity and knowing God's Mm -hmm. Word. Michelle and I can't wait for you to follow the podcast and tell your friends about it. Together, we would love to motivate people to explore God's Word. So join us, share, tell your friends. And also when you're listening to the podcast, make sure you're subscribed or mm-hmm. you've hit the, you've clicked the bu- the button follow. Uh, and also if you've done those subscribed and followed, then share it, share it. Sharing is caring friends. It share is. it with a friend. Okay. So today we are reading Jeremiah 25 verses 15 through 38 and Jeremiah 36. Then we move on to Jeremiah 45 and Jeremiah 46. Okay, these are some hard, hard chapters mm-hmm. in Jeremiah. Oh, poor Jeremiah. Like the weeping prophet. He's I, there's reason it's, to weep. It, it was life was hard for Jeremiah. That's all I've got to say. It was not an easy life, the one that God called him to. Not an easy life. Yeah. In this passage again, he receives a vision and a message from the Lord concerning impending judgment. I mean was he ever, like, it would just, just wake up and all these visions would come. I don't know. It just seems like over and over again, it's this judgment that's coming, these warnings that God wants him to give people. So it starts with describing the cup of God's wrath filled with anger. And he instructs Jeremiah to make the nations drink from it. And the nations mentioned include Egypt and Philistia and Moab and Ammon and Edom and Damascus and Arabia and Babylon, which is a far, far place away and still Mm not do along with the people of Judah and they will all face the consequences of their wickedness and then we move to the reign Mm -hmm. of King Jehoiakim of Judah and the fourth year of his reign Jeremiah receives a divine command to write down all the prophecies he received against Judah Israel and all the nations and these prophecies span many years and there's lots of warnings and it talks about in 36 2 through 3 it says get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message right up into the present. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent when they hear again all the terrible things I planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. And so then Jeremiah gets a scribe, Burek, and he dictates the prophecies. So Burek faithfully writes down all the words of Jeremiah was saying, and the scribe is writing them down. Um, And then hearing the scroll's contents, you know, so they take them over to the temple courtyard. The officials are angry and they report the matter to the king and they urge, um, some people urge Barak and Jeremiah to go into hiding and King Jehoiakim then inform, is informed what the scroll says, and he orders it to be read in front of him. And this was so sad because as the scroll was being read, they would cut off a piece of it and throw it in the fire. And then they read mm. some more. And, and I'm like, that is so much work mm. of writing everything down. And the king is just cutting it off and throwing it in the fire. And it really shows the stubbornness and resistance of King Jehoiakim and the leaders of Judah that God was trying to give him another chance to hear his warning and to repent. And it also foreshadows the impending judgment because they're just refusing to listen. The disrespect. I mean, Mm -hmm. the disrespect they had for God, the disrespect they had for Jeremiah. Oh man. Yeah. So hard. Well, as we know, Barak is Jeremiah's long time trusted associate and He basically, Jeremiah dictates to him, well, a little known fact that I found about Barak is he happens to be the only man in the Old Testament who has been fingerprinted. What? I know, isn't that cool? So in 1975, a group of archaeologists purchased some clay dark document markers from an Arab 
antique dealer or antiquities dealer. You know, that cool word antiquities. Yeah. And the archaeologists did not decipher the markers, which were the bookmarks of the ancient world until 1986. And when they did, they discovered that one of them bears the seal of Barak, son of Venaria. Since then, another document marker has been discovered that bears not only Barak's seal, but also a thumbprint, mm. very probably the th- thumbprint of the scribe himself. And this was according to scholar Philip Riken. Okay, just think about that. That is so cool. <laughs> That think about so that. Cool. We're, t- we're talking more than 600 years before Christ was born. And there's a fingerprint, which it makes sense. He was a scribe. So he was he, scribe yeah. his fingerprints are all over these things as he's writing things for Jeremiah and handing them off. But I just thought that is really cool to come up with his fingerprint or possibly his fingerprint. But that is that's really cool. Okay, so Barak is writing down Jeremiah's words from the Lord, and God says, I am worn out from sighing and can find no rest. Like God is fed Mm -hmm. up. And this is wearing on Jeremiah and Barak too. I mean, this is, oh, so hard. So then we read the messages for the nations, beginning with Egypt. They are told to prepare their shields because they are going into battle, but soon they will flee in terror and will be terrorized at every turn. And remember, this is King Nico who had that skirmish with Josiah mm-hmm. where Josiah died. Well, Egypt is an enemy and the Lord of heaven's armies will take vengeance. And then we see how God will use King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon to attack Egypt. And God says that in the end of the battle, Egypt will be humiliated and handed over to the people from the north. And after that, God comforts the small remnant remaining in the land that was afraid. Well, of course they would be afraid. I mean, come on, they're listening to all that's going to be happening, they would be afraid. God wanted them not to fear or be dismayed and trust him in that land. And a scholar quoted on on EnduringWord.com says, in the midst of wrath, God remembers mercy. Mm. Though Judah should be destroyed, Jerusalem taken, the temple burnt to the ground, and the people carried into captivity. I mean, that's a lot. A lot. Yet, the nation shall not be destroyed. So the nation won't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. A seed shall be preserved out of which the nation shall revive. I mean, there really is some beauty in this hard, hard, dark days that we are reading through. There's some beauty. And God does, like, I think that every day that we have read, there is always something. There is always a promise. There is always a glimmer of what God is going to be doing for his people. There is always something to hope for, even though there is the punishment is coming and it's coming quickly. There's still something to hope for. So. Yeah. And God says like, he's tired of it, but he's still like, but there's going to be a remnant, but I'm going to take care of you. Uh, that's just amazing that even though he's fed up, which is uh, understandable that he still points to the hope in the future that he has for them. Yeah. Well, we need to take a break hear from our sponsor and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. Michelle, did you know that christianbook.com has been a trusted name in the Christian world of books and curriculum for 45 years? Trisha, I hear some exciting news for homeschool parents. If you haven't gotten all your curriculum for the new school year, you need to check out christianbook.com. Actually, I buy from them every year and I just got an order of some new math books. They sell over 45,000 homeschooling products. We're talking curriculum, unit studies, and lots of electives. Their summer sale is happening right now. You'll want to check them out today so that you can enter to win a $500 gift card that you can put towards all your homeschool needs and more. Just register christianbook.com slash daily. So thank you, Christian Book, for your 45 years of service to us. This homeschooling family and so many more really appreciate all you do. That's christianbook.com slash daily to enter and win a $500 gift card. 
the roof was completely gone. All of our memories being wiped away. The rain is what got 20 us. minutes of sheer terror. And you can feel it in your body. I watched the fire move down the canyon. The rumbling of the house. My son started screaming, we're going to die, we're going to die. In the name of Jesus, we are not going to die. At Samaritan's Purse, we bring spiritual and physical aid to hurting people around the world. We go into dangerous situations because in disaster, in disease, in war, Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, to heal the sick, feed the hungry, restore the broken. All who work and volunteer with Samaritan's Purse follow the example of Jesus. We go to serve, not to be served. And we go in Jesus' name. Join us at SamaritansPurse.org. That's SamaritansPurse.org. Okay, the word of the day is scribe. So a scribe is a person who copies out documents, especially one employed to do this before printing was mm. invented. And that's why it hurt my heart so much because um, he had a hand write everything. Like you mentioned, his mm -hmm. fingerprint is on there. So the interesting thing, though, as I'm reading this, Michelle, I was like, I don't remember this, uh, this scribe Barrick standing out to me before. I don't um, like, I'm like, did I read this? Of course, I've read through the Bible many times, but that part of the story just really struck a chord with me after the king was burning all the rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord gave Jeremiah another, another message and he said, get another scroll and write everything again, just as you did on the scroll King Jehoiakim burned. And I thought easy for him to say, like Barak did the writing. Um, it would be like me writing in a whole book and just having one copy and, and someone else ripping it up. You know, it was just be like, that's so much work. And Jeremiah took another scroll and he dictated again to Barak. And he wrote everything that had been on the scroll that was burned up. And this time it said he added more. Um, and so still no one listened. So then this is the second time they've done this. They've even added more details. No one is listening. It would it'd be like all my reviews on Amazon being one star. And like no one liking it. I mean, maybe even worse than that, like zero stars. Like they're not even caring at all. Um, at least people or usually them burning your books and then sending you a box of the ashes. There we Here go. you go, Trisha. Here's what we thought. Yeah. It's just like, that is so much work. And yeah. he was worn out. He was worn out. Mm -hmm. And how do we know this? Because God had a message just for Barak. And it said yeah. in Jeremiah 45, three, you have said, I am overwhelmed with trouble. Haven't I had enough pain already? And now the Lord has added more. I am worn out from sighing and can find no rest. And this story makes me think of the overlooked people who are serving God. So, you know, we remember Jeremiah. You and I both go, oh, yeah, people say, Jeremiah, weeping prophet. We we understand and we know who he is. But Barak, if he came up in trivial pursuit, like most people would not know who he was. He was sitting there doing all the writing and we're doing all this work and like I am he's like I am wore out um and throughout the bible we see times when God's servants are wore out I mean even the ones we do know Moses and David and Paul early Christians um Paul wrote to followers therefore since God since through God's mercy we have this ministry we do not lose heart mm -hmm. so we see in the old testament people losing heart in the New Testament, people losing heart. Um, and then one cool thing is that Jesus actually refers to his followers as scribes. So in Matthew 13, 51 through 52, he says, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. And so we are studying the old, which is the old ways of God. And I love how he calls like, okay, if you understand this, you're a scribe who's being trained for the kingdom. He was referring to his followers as scribes, which I think was really cool. Um, in Knowing God, J.I. Packer says, Christian minds have been conformed to the modern spirit, the spirit that is, it spawns great thoughts of man and leaves room only for small thoughts of God. And it seems like the day there's so much knowledge. We can learn all these things, but very few people take time to really think about God. And scribes, like Jesus was saying, they fill their minds with great thoughts of God. And they, once they're filling their mind with God, then they have less room for those 
lots of man. It's like the reverse of what we're, people are doing in society. So think of that job of a scribe, not just as like this guy from the Old Testament that was helping, helping Jeremiah, but each of us, we're supposed to be trained. We're supposed to understand. We're supposed to follow the ways of heaven. And that's what we're doing. Like mm-hmm. by reading uh, God's words, by understanding, by sharing on Facebook, by talking on a podcast, it might not be books, but it could be Facebook messages or encouraging letters or thank you card. And um, when we share good news of Jesus, we are a scribe. Um, you know, just even those cards to your grandma or from grandma, those are scribes that are making a kingdom impact. You know, as you're talking about a scribe, I'm remembering um, a young man that I knew and, and I can't, I'm just, as I'm remembering the story, I can't finish it, but I can start it. And that was, he started off a couple of years ago in January, like we, like many of us do, we start off reading the Mm -hmm. Bible and, and then wanting to, of course, complete it. And then many, we stop in February Mm -hmm. or March, which is why we started the daily Bible podcast to keep everyone going. But he started instead of reading through the Bible, he wrote through the Bible. Mm. And so he started in the beginning with Genesis 1-1. And his whole goal was to get through the entire book, entire Bible, not in a year, because that would be impossible. But I remember it was probably three or four months in, and Genesis was completed. And then he was moving on to the next book, and then the next book. And it was incredible to hear what God was doing in his mind while he was mm-hmm. writing all of God's words mm-hmm. down. And, and I'm just like that there is something, there is something when we sit down and we copy a verse and write it down on a post-it note and put it on the side of our computer screen or put it on a mirror, or um, sometimes I'll leave notes I don't know that I've left as many Bible notes um, for Joe, but I'll leave notes for Joe. And, but sometimes I will be reading something in like our daily, you know, chronological Bible. And I'll be like, oh, this would encourage Joe. And so I'll type it up and I'll send it off to him. I mean, that's, there is power in God's word when we are regurgitating it through our hand and writing it down. And so just like Baruch or just like Barak was doing, he was being a scribe. Like we don't have to have the original words. We have the original words in the Bible, but we can still scribe Mm -hmm. it. We can still write it down. And it's going to feed us in a different way than just reading it because you are just sitting there and you're meditating on the words in a different way. And so I like this word scribe. I don't know if I have enough time, although I think that, well, God's most important. So maybe I should sit down and start writing some of these words out. Yeah. I love when I look back at my old journals, like from when I had my oldest kids were babies. So they're 34. My oldest is 34. So they're old. There's a lot of scripture verses. There's a lot of scripture verses and they're more, even more than what was happening in my day. And I think that's what God was doing. He was pointing out these verses to me and I was writing them down. And even when we're writing our show notes, Michelle, like you and I sit down, we have no idea what's going to come out of it. Like, or like sit down, you read, I read, we kind of, all of a sudden something will come to light. And then God's word speaks to us so we can apply it to our lives. And I love that every single time when we sit down with God's word, when we write out a scripture, when we write out a note to someone and include a scripture, when we write out notes for a podcast, God always speaks. There's never a time we're like, I don't know what to say about this. Like he Mm -hmm. always speaks through it and uses it. And I just, I just love that. And so we just have to be faithful and be that scribe that are preparing ourselves, that are learning Mm -hmm. God's word, that are writing it down and sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. Would you pray for us that we would do just that today? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have given us this word scribe as a reminder to write down your, your word to 
use it to share it with other people. And just like um, Barrick's words were thrown into the fire, it's not up to us what other people do with it. <laughs> it's just up to us to be faithful and share it. I pray that you will just put it on our hearts, someone to encourage today, to send them a note or an email or a message, Lord. And I pray that your good words and good work will go out and bless them. And be with all of us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we are reading Jeremiah 19 and Jeremiah 20, and then we start a new book. Whoop! We are starting Daniel 1 tomorrow. Yay. So Jeremiah 19 and 20 and Daniel 1. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find great podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Scripture and brain science agree. Meditating on God's Word transforms us and reduces stress in our lives. I'm Jody Nisnik, host of So Much More, Creating Space for God, a scripture meditation podcast. And each week I give you space to hear God's Word, listen to the Spirit, and pray about what's on your heart. And then we have a thoughtful conversation with guests to help us go deeper. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com.